So in this video, I want to talk about Spirit Chronicles, and I want to talk about Seasons 1 and 2 of the anime, because the series as a whole has been one of those where, honestly, if we were looking back at about five, six years ago, this is a series that probably never would have gotten a second season. But because of the anime industry growth, and just how sort of things have changed a lot, we're seeing a lot more animes like this getting new sequels. And this is in that area of harem, isekai, reincarnation, romance, kind of adventure kind of series. And so yeah, it's hit and miss. It's based on a light novel, it's got a dub for those that do want it. Though I would... I wouldn't recommend the dub, if I'm being honest. The reason being is because when I watch the dub, especially in Season 2, there's this issue where the new characters that get introduced from the other world, they don't speak the language of the world, so they do some kind of work around with the spirit where they're like, oh, I can do a translation because of him, and kind of make it so other people can communicate but what happens is they actually have two voices overlapping over each other to make it look like there's like a translation thing going on in the anime like it, i get why they've done it it's done in a way to make it sound like there is translation going on between their languages but it also makes it really hard to hear what they're saying because you're hearing two voices overlap each other and it just makes it really really choppy and annoying I, i'm just at that point where i'm just like I would prefer that they just don't do it, and I just kind of use my own imagination that they're somehow talking to each other. It just, yeah, it, it's very annoying how the dub is done. It's not anything on the voice actors itself. It's just clearly a decision on the people that are doing the dubbing on the higher end that they've just decided to do some weird choppy stuff that just ends up making the voices really hard to listen to. The other thing about this is as well is that it's kind of funny because you can kind of go into season two without even watching season one. And I know that sounds really weird, but a lot of the stuff that they're explaining in the early stages of Season 2 is pretty much just kind of like exposition in of what happened in his past, how they're in the situation they are, the new characters that have been introduced. So it's almost like a little bit of a mini summary of everything, but they're not like replaying old scenes, they're kind of like explaining it to each other while other stuff is being going on, and it's... It's, it's a little bit like a recap, but kind of done in a little bit of a different way. But it just kind of made me realize when I was watching, I was like, oh, I don't really even need to re-watch season one to remember everything. I can just kind of go with season two. Though they are dropping a lot of information about all these heroes and stuff, and the connection between him and the past, and this individual that he made a promise to, this girl, it is a question of when is she going to find out, or is he going to continue keeping that a secret and then there's also the whole sort of explaining that he is very much built on revenge now i i'll be honest i do find the edgy teen kind of attitude a little bit annoying and a little bit cringy because of this whole idea of oh i've changed now i'm no longer the lo the old person and i'm going to go on an adventure of revenge and i'm just like mm, i get it but i'm like uh, with all the characters that are around him that are supporting him and then his spirits is like oh yeah he relies on his teacher more and blah 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 i'm just like so why is he doing the edgy stuff and then he's kind of all cutesy i i, I just i do find the edginess a little bit excessive that's just my opinion i'm sure i'm gonna get some uh, some interesting comments of people explaining why the edginess is needed probably from the younger age demographic telling me how being edgy is still cool I, I went through high school, I've seen some of my friends and people that I associated with go through those edgy phases, edgy phases and I still see some kids to this day go through it, and I just still kind of cringe at it, because I'm like, yeah, I, I, I just find it weird. But at the same time, I understand why he's going through that kind of situation that he's kind of got the past kind of holding him back, and he's kind of like on this pursuit of revenge itself but i do feel like it is going to consume him and it's going to end up causing more problems than anything and it's going to probably require his teacher and his past childhood friend to kind of bring him back to reality but i am also curious of where this kind of harem is going to go because there are two outcomes generally for harems either a they pick one girl and the other girls all get sidelined and they become like a cheerleader kind of thing kind of like sao or he ends up picking them all and they all end up living happily ever after where he's tapping who all these girls but they're all kind of like always wanting his attention I do think this will probably go down that route where he ends up having all of them as his wives kind of thing later on, but 
how that builds up, we'll just have to wait and see. It's it's a fun series if you just want to sort of t- turn your mind off, put some popcorn kind of mindset or a snack or something, and you just kind of watch it mindlessly. And the fact that they're dubbing this like right on the drop of like when the episodes drop, it's it's clearly a series that Crunchyroll sees as popular. It's very much rated very highly. So at the end of the day, I would say to people, if you watch season one and you enjoyed it, continue along but if you are someone that's coming into it fresh and new and you're like oh i wonder if this is worth watching it is it is an isekai it is a reincarnation it is a harem fantasy romance setting and i feel like it's one of those where yeah you just kind of need to put yourself in the dis like just sit back don't overthink things and just kind of enjoy it for the ride that it is i do find that some people take that as an insult on animes when you kind of say yeah you just need to turn your brain off for some of these shows but if you take that as an insult, that's more on you than anything else. I don't think it's a bad thing because there are many shows where I just don't want to overthink things and I just want to turn my brain off, enjoy some good old-fashioned cutesy harem romance building with some plot in there and not overthink things, not look at every little detail that needs to be picked out and make sure every plot makes sense. It's just one of those where I can sit back, relax, turn my brain off, and enjoy it for what it is. And it is a very easy self-insert as well, which is why I do think it is very popular in the younger age demographic, because it is a straight self-insert. Main protagonist does have its personality traits, but it also allows for it to feel a little bit blank and that you can kind of insert yourself. Like I said, it's it's a mixture. It's not a complete default one where you've got something like an infinite stratus kind of style thing where the main protagonist just has no personality whatsoever. And you just, it's a straight one-to-one easy insert. This one has a bit of personality, but it's one of those where you can still do a bit of a self-insert as well. So I think, again, it all just depends on the individuals. I'm just being fair and balanced in how I see it. I, I see it for what it is. I'm not trying to say, you know, you, if you love this anime and you think it's the best thing since sliced bread, that your choice in anime is terrible. I'm just simply saying that, hey, you know, you've got to be self-aware that these some of these shows are designed in a way so that it's very easily to digest. You don't want to overcomplicate the stories. You keep it as sort of the, the heroes being summoned and they're all kind of coming together and we've got to find them. And I do think those those others that have been transported are probably potentially going to be the heroes. But I also think there's going to be this situation where some of the heroes aren't particularly great people. So they're kind of like, they are heroes, but they're not. It's like, eh, they're not probably the best heroes that you probably want on your side. There is also the potential that they've summoned some people, as the main protagonist said, summoned some people in the world that aren't really heroes. They're just kind of being wrapped up in the whole situation. Maybe that's true, but I do feel like there's going to be an interesting kind of thing of some of these heroes aren't going to be quite the heroes that people want, if you catch my general gist. And those are the kind of isekais I like the most. I would get kind of bored of the generic isekais where it's just one person reincarnated or transported and then that's it. I kind of like the chaotic nature of throwing in multiple sort of isekai reincarnations or teleportations all in one, especially if they mix it up a little bit, especially with him being reincarnated and then being transported, you mix it up a little bit and it allows for some interesting chaos in the story itself. And I think the story doing that is good because I do kind of get bored of those like one character being transported and then everything is just them transforming an entire civilization into Japan. And I'm just like, okay, I get I get you love Japan culture, but I'm like, it just feels a little bit excessive when that's too much of a copy paste. So I like what they're doing with this story. Even though there is some aspects of it bringing in the Japanese culture, it's not overdone. It's It's got its own little sort of... It's got its foundations, but it's trying to do something a little bit unique in its own sense. So that's all I have to say about it. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like the anime? Do you like the light novels? What is the differences also? Because... With these kinds of series, they never do a one-to-one completely, and being it that it's on a light novel, I have a sneaking suspicion some people are going to either love the anime or hate it as a light novel reader, and it's going to be one of those on the fence. So, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.